Spring is the time for the Orthosias, a group of noctuids in the subfamily of Hadeninae. And there are about ten or so species within this genus. Uh, and probably the commonest and most certainly the most distinctive is this one. This is the Hebrew character. A fairly diagnostic shape with uh, tentiform uh, in its po resting posture, but it's the, the the brown with the distinctive black uh, mark on it, uh, or pair of marks um, that surround the uh, orbicular stigma and the, uh, leading to the reniform stigma, the kidney mark that really um, give this species its name. All species in this subfamily that had anines uh, all have hairy eyes so if you hold the, uh, the moth up to the light uh, with a hand lens and look across the surface of the eye you'll see it covered with hairs. So a nice easy one uh, to start off with. Another of the Orthosias, uh, this is Common Quaker, Orthosia cerasii. Uh, it's again a very common species and you'll find it in most moth traps if you run it regularly enough. The key feature of identifying this species uh, are the shape of the two most prominent um, stigma, so the the reniform stigma is um, in some books uh, described as the kidney mark, um, which is the, um, the right hand of the two in this image. Uh, it's not very kidney shaped, it's quite bloated, it's, it's um, almost oval. And the stigma on the left is the orbicular stigma, uh, the eye shaped stigma. And it's usually more uh, a circular feature on, on most species of noctuid. Uh, in this case, again, it's quite, uh, quite bloated, quite big, quite, quite round. So another pretty distinctive, very common species of Orthosia, the common Quaker. So this one is the small Quaker, Orthosia cruda. Uh, it's a smaller moth than uh, the common Quaker and it's generally quite sort of mottled in colour, quite variable in colour, All of the, both this and common Quaker are quite variable. Uh, but the key uh, to recognising this is the shape of the, the reniform stigma and, and again the orbicular stigma. Uh, the reniform stigma, the kidney mark, is much narrower much thinner uh, and the orbicular stigma is is much smaller. So this is a powdered Quaker. It's similar in sort of colour to a uh, small Quaker but it's bigger uh, and it's got a much more rounded reniform stigma. Uh, the series of dots uh, that you get along the post-median line, uh, which is that sort of semicircle around the reniform stigma, is also quite commonly apparent on powdered Quaker. Um, otherwise it's very much the same sort of uh, shape as the other Orthosia species. And uh, so yeah, so it's, uh, it's basically a big, pale, small Quaker is a powdered Quaker. So this is Orthosia inserta, uh, the clouded drab. Uh, it's a dark species compared to um, most of the other species in this genus. Often this sort of um, dark grey-brown sort of colour uh, with uh, maybe slightly sort of pinkier, 
uh, markings it can be reasonably variable this isn't a, a particularly well marked individual um, so not much in terms of um, obvious markings I mean the the reniform stigma and the albicular stigma are you can just about make them out on here uh, it's also got a subterminal line that you can just about make out um, picked out by that slightly sort of uh, pinkier reddish you know, reddisher coloration I don't have any video of a lead colored drab but so here is an image from the Glamorgan Moth Group archives um, which is quite a nice comparison of the two species. So on the left is a lead-coloured drab and on the right is a clouded drab. Now bearing in mind clouded drab can be quite variable in colour and you can get them that look the same sort of colour as, a, as, a, as this, um, this lead-coloured. The main sort of differences are, um, are morphological so don't, don't worry about markings so much. Look at the, the shape of the of the shape and size of the moth. So um, one of the key features is the uh, tip of the uh, forewing. Lead coloured drab is a much more rounded shape um, than um, clouded drab and in many ways it looks a bit more like the shape of a, of a common Quaker than a, than, a, um, than a clouded drab. Also it's clearly a, um, a smaller moth um, and uh, le a more sort of squat, less elongate, less angular. Um, and then the key feature, really, in the males in particular, is is on the uh, on the antennae. So um, the shape of the feathering on the antennae of the male, lead coloured, is is completely different from that which you see on on the clouded. So this is the twin spot Quaker. It's an honorary orthosia, used to be in the same genus as the others, uh, but uh, has recently been put into Anorthoa. Uh, so it's Anorthoa munda. Uh, the main um, features of Twin Spot Quaker fairly obviously are the two, uh, the twin spots, uh, which are along the subterminal line can be quite variable in colour um, but it is none, nevertheless quite a distinctive um, shape. It's, it's more sort of rounded, it doesn't sit quite so tent-like as the other um, orthosia species. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, one of, uh, one of the less regular of the um, Qua spring Quaker species. This is the Blossom Underwing. Uh, it's uh, another one for which I don't have a video because it's not a moth I've actually seen. So this is another photo that's taken from the Glamorgan Moth Group um, website uh, picture library. Uh, it's uh, certainly one of the more um, unusual um, of this particular group, but it's quite a distinctive one being um, quite sort of almost pinkish uh, in its coloration um, and uh, it has that sort of uh, darker uh, medium face here not not particularly dark but dark darker than the general sort of ground color slightly pinkish um, and with pale hind wings and it's very much associated with oak woodlands so it's uh, and it's yeah it's, it's quite an unusual species generally and uh, very nice to get in the moth trap final species that I'm going to cover in this video is the northern drab. Um, it's the same genus, another orthosia, uh, but uh, and again it's, a, it's not one of the commoner ones. Um, tends to be more sort of habitat restricted, so not certainly not a generalist. And it's much more angular really, and you can see that from this photo again from the uh, the Morgan Moth Recording Group photo archives. Uh, very angular, very sort of um, very sort of more greyish really than uh, the other species. I guess it's most 
similar to clouded drab um, in colour and tone but it usually has uh, that pronounced median fascia um, and uh, and yeah generally a sort of a, a dark but but sort of greyish kind of moth but it's the shape of the wings really that uh, that will make it stand out from the other orthosia species.